All right, thanks, Raleigh, and welcome, everybody. Yeah, we're going to kind of concentrate this time. First, uh, the first question I usually ask, just to see how fast or slow I need to go, is how many people have seen my presentations before? Uh, obviously, Y for yes, N for no. Uh, OK. OK, more no's than uh, normal. So I'll. We're going to kind of go back to the basics here on this uh, session, which is trend analysis. And the reason trend analysis is is uh, much easier to analyze with candlesticks is because the Japanese rice traders basically told us that the uh, that we can see what's going on in investor sentiment for any time frame based upon the candlestick signals. Um, I am just curious how long this webinar is scheduled. Probably about 45 minutes or so, give or take a few minutes, uh, Lanford. So uh, the candlestick signals are highly uh, accurate as far as telling us what's going on in investor sentiment. So uh, if, if you haven't seen any of my presentations, there's 12 major signals that you really want to be aware of. Out of the 50 or 60 signals that are in the candlestick universe, there's only 12 that you're going to see 99.9% .9 of the time. And so instead of spending a lot of time and effort learning all the signals, if you just learn the 12 and understand what the rationale was for creating those signals or what the investor sentiment was for creating those signals, you're going to have as much insight as to why markets move and when they change as an investor that's been trading for 50 years in the market. Um, so with that, we're going to go back to the very basic. Hello, this when, is Steve uh, Bigelow with the Candlestick uh, Forum. And that's doing the I'm trend going to analysis. do a brief and demonstration. So the uh, rhetorical on... question is, why is trend analysis important? Well, no matter what time frame you're, you're trading, it allows you to get a much uh, higher degree of probability of being in the right trade at the right time so that your positioning for a, a trend trade, uh, meaning if you're a swing trader or a long-term investor, it works for telling you when that trend is in your favor. And if you're a day trader or a swing trader, it also tells you whether you should be trading today on a, uh, in long charts or a long orientation or a short uh, orientation. So when we're doing trend analysis, our indicators are number one, the signals. That's the most important uh, element of, of knowing what's going on in investor sentiment. Then there's some very high probability patterns. Then we want to see where the uh, 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 stochastics are, where there are trend lines, where they're moving averages. That all kind of constitutes a very favorable probability of knowing which way to. Uh, uh, which way the trend's moving. Now, again, that seems like a lot of information, except that information is instantaneous when you look at it visually. So the moving averages that we use are the 200 simple, the 50-day simple, and the 20-day simple. And the reason we use those is because every major money manager around the world uses the, those moving averages to make decisions about their portfolio. Well, then we also use the eight exponential that we use call the T line, which we'll get into here in a little bit. And what does the market signify? It's usually the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500. That's going to give you a good orientation of what's happening. So it's easy visually to see when there's a trend in progress and when there's a change of trend in progress. So again, we're using the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. The gray line is the 20-day simple moving average. And the T line is this black line, the 8 exponential moving average. So when we're analyzing a trend, we want to see whether we're in a downtrend or whether we're in an uptrend or in a sideways market. That's all going to help us orient which direction our, uh, our, our uh, trade should be in. We also know when price patterns or trend patterns are in progress. Prices usually move in waves. So we can see whether there's a wave one, wave two, 
wave three in progress. And that's basically, we can analyze what's happening during those trends. And those become what a lot of investors call pennants or uh, wedges. And we can see exactly what happens when we get to a top or a bottom of these uh, wedges, basically due to what type of signals or candlestick signals are appearing at that time. So if we see one of these forming, we know exactly what to do once we see a breakout. We know this is wave one, this is wave two, a wedge formation, and wave three is usually gonna be the same magnitude as wave one. The reason we can see that this was heading in that direction is when we got to the bottom of the wedge, we could see there was a candlestick buy signal, a bullish harami. Now we can hold this to see what it does with the top of that channel. And when it breaks through, we know we can continue to hold. If it had failed here, we knew the wedge formation was still in progress. We want to be back out of that trade. We can see when a wave one, a wave two is in formation, and when they breach that level, we know that we're heading for wave three to the downside. These are channel breakouts. Now, the reason that we have a much better feel or vision for what's happening in these trend channels is because we can see what type of signals or patterns are occurring at the top of the wedge or whether that bullish signal is occurring at the bottom of the wedge. When we can see there's a candle, new candlestick uh, signal or telling us that they didn't support at this level, we know right away we're in wave three. Now, because of each magnitude of the uh, signals, we know what a pullback looks like if it's very indecisive, but there's not obviously a very decisive pullback, which means more than likely the uptrend is still in progress. So there's a very simple rule that we use with the T-line that if we see a candlestick buy signal to close above the T-line, we can stay long as long as we don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. So even if we see a close below the T-line and we can see that we're in an uptrend and it's pulling back very indecisively, we're still prepared for that next move to the upside, that that pullback isn't uh, very very uh, decisive. We can also see, also see when trend channels are developing. So we know when to be selling and we know when to be buying. So again, this is not rocket science. This is just what price movements do during a, a, a trend or during a wedge type formation. And so this is why we can analyze what should we be doing in this type of move? Well, if we can see that it's a slow, steady uptrend, even though it's waffling, we know that we could be analyzing individual charts to tell us uh, as long as this uptrend remains in progress that we can still be, be long. It's when they break that uh, trend is that, that we start looking for uh, different patterns in individual stocks. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. It's called the T-line because we shorten it from trigger line. And it basically says if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line, you're in an uptrend. If you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you're in a downtrend until you see that candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. Additionally, I use stochastics, a 1233, and the Japanese rice traders have a very simple concept, which is what you want to do when you're trading is keep your trading uh, techniques as simple as possible. And their analysis is if you're in an oversold signal and you see a candlestick buy signal, more than likely you're in an uptrend. If you're in the overbought area and you see a candlestick sell signal, more than likely you're back in a downtrend. Or we know what patterns to be looking for. This is what we call the dumpling top, which is the opposite of a fry pan bottom, which I hope will have some illustrations. But a dumpling top tells you what type of trading is going on. This is what happened, I don't think, this past summer. Maybe it was this past summer. But you can see that you couldn't trade this one way or the other. You can see there was up days, down days, up days, down days. Made it very difficult to trade, but you could see what the whole pattern was doing. This was a big rounding top. This tells you the investor sentiment wasn't going anywhere, and it was starting to pick up steam in this direction. And that's 
even though all summer we couldn't get make any money, we knew that once it broke the downtrend, that we now had a very strong down move. That's the expectation coming out of a dumpling top is a very strong down move. We also know how to use the trend lines, support and resistance. If we see a trend channel forming, if we see this was a bottom and this was a top, and we come back down to the bottom, there was our morning star type signal. Where's our next target? Back up here at the top again. So anytime we see the development of a trend channel, we know that's what investor sentiment is telling us. They aren't selling it off. They're staying above this trend channel. Might be a moving average, uh, but you can see we could draw a line right through this. Then this was uh, the, the indexes. We could see on this day, when we woke up the next morning, what should we expect if this trend channel was going to stay in progress? Obviously, we wanted to see the pre-market futures positive. The next day when we woke up and the pre-market futures are showing the Dow is going to be down, opening down 140 points, that told us that there was a whole new concept or a whole new perception of this trend channel, that if we had any long positions that weren't acting or showing weakness, we wanted to close them out immediately and start going short. Now that was on the Dow. During this whole uptrend, there could be days where the Dow was up and the NASDAQ was down or vice versa. But then when we got up here to the top of the channel, on the same day that we saw that the pre-market futures were showing the Dow was opening lower, and we had a bearish engulfing signal and a gap down in the NASDAQ, that pretty much told us they weren't shifting funds around from sector to sector, but they were selling off the whole market with great enthusiasm. And that's, that's what the signals tell us, is when the selling is starting to come in with great enthusiasm, we want to be out of long positions and going short. We also have techniques where um, that when that channel or when that uh, channel broke, there's simple trend analysis factors that we can use, and we can use them much better with candlestick signals because we can see when the selling has stopped and the buying started. But we've got to remember, this is what my uh, uh, late friend, you know, we'll get to the blue I show you here in a minute, but the moving averages, again, is what everybody is watching. We can see exactly what happens when we get there. Once we breach that support level, we we'll usually come back up and test to see whether that support level is not going to act as resistance. How do we tell that? Because once we got up here, we saw there was indecisive trading, doji, doji, hanging man, bearish confirmation. They failed that level. How far did they fail it? Well, back here until we saw that they did a bullish harami. And the bullish harami is one of the 12 major signals. The bullish, obviously, is the uh, buy signal. And it basically tells us the selling had stopped when it was confirmed the next day. So there's very simple rules of the moving averages that act as support and resistance. The first time it acts as resistance, if it pulls back and attempts it the second time, it's usually going to go through. Then there's also the next uh, analysis, that if a resistance area is breached, it'll usually come back and test to see if it's going to act as support. We can see immediately that when they pulled it back, they weren't coming back down. They did another bullish harami, which told us the selling had stopped. And where did they do it? Right smack dab off the 50-day moving average. That told us our next uh, move was going to be that the 50 was acting as support, that our uptrend was still in progress. We can see that same analysis in the NASDAQ at the same time. There's our inverted hammer, one of the 12 major signals. Bounces up, comes back down, right at the same support level, does a bullish harami, where's our next target? Coming up here to test the 50, pulls back, and notice what happened every time they came back down to the 20. They would sell it off, right smack dab to the 20, and did hammer type signals. So far, I am only seeing support channel resistance. Are you gonna explain the shapes of candles? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Shaquille, the signals are, was, oh, recordings or not recordings sessions earlier showing you the 12 major signals so that's why i'm trying to explain what some of them look like 
as we go along at the uh, support and resistance levels. So when you get hammer type signals, and hammer type signals are when the tails are big to the downside and the bodies are small at the top, those are hammers. And once they start indicating, and basically it tells you every time the bears knock it down, the bulls step back in. And then when they do a bullish confirmation of the signals and they close above the 50, that told us that this, the uh, resistance level is now not, not acting as resistance. You're in an uptrend. So this is very, just very simple analysis. Um, hammers or umbrellas depends on where they are. Well, they're not umbrellas. If they're at the bottom of a trend, they're hammers. If they're at the top, they're called hanging man. I'll see if I find can find some of those. But here's why we can use the signals very well with our trend analysis. If we can see we're in a downtrend, and every time something comes back up to the 50-day moving average and starts doing sell signals, that pretty much tells us our downtrend is still in progress until we see a candlestick reversal signal. Again, there's our hammer signal in the oversold condition. That's telling us we've got a move to up the upside. Where's our next potential target? Up here at the 50. But there's the most important criteria for analyzing a trend reversal is not support and resistance levels. It's what the candlestick sell signals are telling you. And again, that comes to back to the very simple concept that the Japanese rice traders over 400 years have shown us the signals that tell you there's a high probability there's going to be a change of investor sentiment and there's going to be a reversal in that trend. So they become the number one element for telling us what's happening at other technical levels, such as a resistance level, like 50-day moving average, or if they're breaking down through a uh, support level. Um, oh, if you're getting an echo, John, you might want to log off real quick and log right back on. That's usually kind of the server connection. All right, so anytime I can, I can analyze the trends very easily by seeing what type of signals we're seeing when we get up to the overbought area. There's our evening star signal, which is a bullish candle, a day of indecision, a doji type day. And a doji is where they open and close at the same level. Then there's a very simple rule of the doji. They're going to move it in the direction how they open it after the doji. So when they open it lower, we know we have a very simple concept. We can stay long as long as we stay above the T-line. There was our evening star signal and a close below the T-line. That told us the probabilities are pretty strong. We're now in a downtrend. And if you can analyze that at the same time that that signal is occurring in the NASDAQ and the same type of signal is occurring in the S&P 500, that gives you just that much more uh, conviction uh, that there's a uh, that there has been a reversal when you see uh, more than one index doing the same thing. When is a doji not a doji? Well, it's always a doji, but it's not a doji signal unless it's occurring in the right condition of a uh, trend. A doji can either occur at the top when you're in the overbought condition or can occur at the bottom. If you're in a downtrend and a doji occurs right here and your stochastics are still in mid-range, Hey, you still have to watch to make sure that it's going to move in the direction how they open it the next day. So if we use that very simple concept that we're in a downtrend until we see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, even though notice how we've been in the oversold area, a lot of people say, well, if you're in the oversold area, isn't that the time to look for a reversal? And the answer is yes, that's the time to look for a reversal but that doesn't necessarily mean that reversal is going to occur. This could stay oversold for months. So we have a very simple analysis. We're in a downtrend until we see an over or a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. Well, there's our kind of our morning star signal. Not quite, but it looks like it could be bottoming here. But the analysis has to be, and it's got to close above the T-line. So we don't get a buy signal until we see a candlestick buy signal, like a bullish engulfing signal, and then a close above the T-line. So the T-line is a confirming indicator. Yes. It's not the priority. The priority is the signal. But if you're in a downtrend, 
we're not ready to uh, close out short positions and or buy until we see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T line. So the analysis again is very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Um, I'm trying not to read and, and recite here at the same time. The candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. I remember the Japanese rice traders did not become wealthy using candlestick signals. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse, the family that developed or uh, discovered what candlestick reversal signals were. They became a, yeah, the Hamna family became the powerhouse in Japan for, for decades, if not centuries. So the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of what is occurring in uh, investor sentiment. And I always tell people, and I had to learn this a long time ago, prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's exactly what the graphics of candlestick signals are, is the graphics of what's going on in investor sentiment. Now there's a caveat to that. You can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. But the caveat is the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability they're going to come back and test it. So that gives you additional confirmation that if this had moved way up here, away from the T-line, and you saw a sell signal, you can at least expect it to come back down and test the T line. The 1233, yes, is for all time frames. These moving averages are all for the same time frames. So you could be looking at a one minute chart, a 10 minute chart, a daily chart, or a monthly chart. They all look exactly the same. How do I confirm with this indicator? Very simple. Let's see, I don't know, I think that's what we're discussing, Moses, is that you can confirm that as long as it stays above the T-line, once you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see that candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Once you start seeing the uh, selling, you can be buying back if it does a J-hook pattern. But notice what it did once it got up here at the exact top. This is what we call a kicker signal. This is one of your... Uh, strongest reversal signals. I can't make this bigger, but a kicker signal is when you have a green candle, a bullish candle. And again, the candles are formed, for those that don't haven't seen candlestick signals, is a green candle, uh-oh, whoops, there we go, is when they open it here and they close it up above where they open it. That creates a green candle. A red candle is where they open it here and close it below where they open it, creating a red candle or a dark candle. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the price will be up or down for, for the day. It just tells you what's happened after the open. And that's the combination of that information is what allows the candlestick investor to see immediately what's going on in investor sentiment. So when you know that the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of investor sentiment and the T line, and remember the 20, the 50, and the 200 is on everybody's uh, Oh, uh, charts. All the major money managers around the world use those moving averages to make decisions about their portfolio. The advantage with candlestick signals is we can see immediately what their their decisions are. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Very few, just a minuscule percentage of the people in the world use the T line. So where the other moving averages act as magnets. Nobody has a T-line on here, but if you put the T-line on your charts and use them, you'll discover that that process works very effectively. So the T-line is somewhat like a Fibonacci number. It's a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So when you add a natural support level of human nature and the graphic depiction of investor sentiment and you add those on the chart, it now becomes a very co strong combination to tell you when you're in the right trade at the right time. So 
since we know that the moving averages act as magnets and we are out of this one, where do you think it's going to move to? Well, if you were a major money manager and you like this one and then you decide you're going to buy it, but in here it's moving sideways, where do you think you're watching to see if it's going to act as a support level? You watch to see if it comes back to a major moving average. What are they doing when it gets there? Well, we can see immediately it's done a morning star type signal and a doji right smack dab on the 50. And remember, a doji tells you there's indecision between the bulls. And the next day is a very simple concept with the doji. It's what we call the doji rule, that if it, it will move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. And if this is occurring, especially with your stochastics in a pullback situation where it's back almost to the oversold area, that basically tells us we had a wave one, a wave two to the support level, and we can stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. So if we're long, this is what we call 45 degree. We can see this is what we call a fry pan bottom, a slow rounding bottom. It breaks out. How long do we stay long? We can stay long until we see a candlestick sell signal kind of close back below the T-line. Why does the eight exponential moving average work? Why not the seven? Jerry, just one of my private training uh, students, uh, Rick Sadler, who now has his own uh, website called Hit or Miss Candlesticks, because he's a scalper. But he came back to me after we did a private sa training session one time. He came down from Anchorage, Alaska, to when I was still based in Houston, Texas. And he sat in front of the screen with me for two and a half days, went back, kept studying it, and then came back to me a few months later, said, hey, look at the eight exponential moving average. And that every time I've done a study on it, that once it trades above the T line, at that time we called it the eight exponential moving average, says it works very effectively until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T line. Uh, yes, Bob, this is being recorded. So why does this work? You can probably throw anything else you want on, but this is the nice thing about the candlestick signals. We know the candlestick signals work, or we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. And there's a simple rule on Wall Street. If something doesn't work, it disappears very quickly. Well, candlestick signals have been around for 400 years. So why isn't everybody using them? Because everybody hasn't learned how to use them yet correctly. So it's not a factor of whether they work or not is just learning how to use them uh, correctly. Oh, and I was going to make a point. Now I forgot what the point was. Ah, humbug. Anyways, I'll, it'll come back to me. So anyways, again, the very simple rule, whether you're trading the, uh, the markets, and the reason we want to analyze what the market is doing is because obviously this becomes a buy point if the Dow is just broken above the T-line, we want to be buying. And notice how far away the uh, doji's occurred in the oversold area. So if we're buying on a positive open after a doji, what do you think our first target is? Oh, verse 7 versus 8. Okay. The nice thing, I get, oh, this is what I was getting to, is the nice thing is you can see there's not a whole lot of stuff on my charts. The moving averages and the T-line. We know the candlestick signals work or that we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. So if somebody says, oh, you ought to try this or that, it's very easy to throw those on your charts, see if they work. If they don't work, you pull them back off. You can probably do any other combination that be close to the eight exponential moving average. And so I tell people, try it. Throw the seven on there, throw the nine on there, throw the 10 simple moving average. Just find something that kind of correlates with your trend that as long as the uptrend stays above the T-line, when it closes below the T-line, you close it out. And so there's nothing to keep people, again, this is not rocket science. This is just showing you things that create high probabilities, and the high probability situations are based upon the, on the uh, signals and patterns. Anything else that we can add to our chart that improves the probabilities Go ahead and do it. If you add something and it's not helping any, take it back off. Use the basic uh, candlestick charts. So we can see exactly what happens uh, when we're developing trend channels. We can see when it hits a bottom, hits a top, 
And once we see that point one and two, and we start seeing cell signals, where's our next target? Back down here to a parallel line, which we is a trend channel. And we have the advantage of seeing what happens at those levels. It doesn't matter what the technical level is, whether it's a moving average, a trend line, a trend channel. We can see exactly what's happening in investor sentiment when it gets to those levels. And once we see buy signals, where are we anticipating this moving to? Out to the next level. What happens when we get there? Well, our same criteria that we use on any trend. If you're in an uptrend and you're in the overbought area and you see a candlestick sell signal like a small bullish harami, or bearish harami, I'm sorry, and it did it right at what we projected as a trend channel, where do we think our next target is? Right, at least back to the T-line. But why take that chance that it's not going to go all the way back down here? You take your profits, and if it closes below the T-line, you can go short. And where do you think your next target is? Either the 50-day moving average or back here to the trend channel. In this case, when it got back down here, what did we have occur? Let's see if I've got a more clear one than that. We saw a doji bounce uh, right off the 200-day moving average right here at the trend channel. And the next day, they opened a positive, and our simple rule of a doji is it's going to move in the direction of how they open it, especially if you're in the oversold area, number one. Number two, look how far away we are from the T-line. So if it opened positive, where do you think our next target is going to be? At least back up to the T-line. And the fact that we see it close above the T-line tells us where's our next target. Probably going back up to the top of that uh, trend channel. Yes, if you see a doji followed by a gap up, especially in the oversold area, that's the pattern we call our best friend. Because that told you not only after a day of indecision, that they've made a decision with great enthusiasm, which meant they gapped up the price. That told you exactly which way that trend was going to move. And not only move, but probably move with exuberance force to the upside. So analyzing the markets are very simple. You have an uptrend. You see a candlestick reversal signal, like an evening star signal, closes below the T-line. Want to see what's going to happen when it hits the next major support level. We saw immediately that it was producing a morning star signal and a close above the T-line. We can stay long until we see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Here's a day right here that we did have a bearish engulfing signal and a close below the T-line. So what do we do the next day? becomes a very simple criteria. If this opens lower and starts trading lower, we know they've reversed it, close out the position. They're bringing it back down. Where did they do it? Right here at the same level. So it would have to open higher and trade higher the next day to stay in it, which in this case it did. Then notice what we did up here. We had that bunch of dojis and a shooting star. Shooting star looks like a shooting star. Little body and the tail is two times greater than the body. And then they open it lower the next day and close it below the T-line. That told us we had a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. It was time to take profits from that trend. So, again, this, this not only tells us to take profits if we happen to be trading a stock that looked like this, but if the markets are starting to tell us there's a downturn, now we have a lot more, uh, I want to say, more credibility or credence to look at our individual stock charts and say, all right, the market's starting to turn. What's happening in our individual stock price? Is it starting to turn? Just gives us more factors to say, all right, it's time to take profits. So we can analyze a trend, whether it's a trend channel. This is Nugget right now, which is the uh, gold uh, uh, ETF. Starting to bottom. This is a few days old. It's starting to bottom in here. And where is it starting to bottom? right smack dab on this lower channel. If it starts staying up above the T-line, where do you think our next target's going to be? Back to the top of the channel. So it just allows us to have a much higher probability uh, trade setup that we're, we know that we can be buying here with the prospect of moving up to this level. And the nice thing about candlestick analysis is that if we can see buy signals or sell signals at support and resistance levels, 
then we know exactly where to be back out of this position. If we happen to be buying this now on positive trading, just above the T line at the bottom of a uh, trend channel, that tells us the probabilities are pretty strong it should be going up. But the Japanese rice traders make the stop loss process very simple. If this was a candle that told us the buyers were in control, where should it not close? It shouldn't close back below the T line or back below the open of this candle. If it did, the bulls aren't there yet. You close out the position. I've been trading, I hate to think about how many years it is now, getting on 40, 45 years. And I've heard every major money manager tell you to cut your losses short and let your profits run. The only profit is, problem with that is, I've never heard a single one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick signals, because it's based upon pure uh, common sense perspectives, is uh, very simple. It tells you when to buy, and it tells you exactly when to get back out of a bad trade and move on to the next one. The, 12, the stochastics I use are 12.33, and that's nothing set in stone. I just spent one night 40 years ago saying, all right, where can I tweak my stochastics to where the peak is that occurring when the peaks of the price is occurring and where the bottoms are occurring when the bottoms are occurring? And because I'm a, uh, oh, uh, a swing trader, they work very effectively for me. And they also work just as effectively if I'm trading on, on soybeans or cattle or the dollar off the 10 minute chart uh, each day. Have you ever tried using Keltner channels as support and resistance levels in lieu of moving averages? Um, Lowry, I don't use anything. No, I should say that the other way. I use everything. If it's Fibonacci numbers, if it's trend channels, if it's uh, moving averages, I don't care what it is. I'm not using those to be, make it as my criteria for buying or selling. My first criteria is, what is the candlestick signal doing? And then what is everything else that uh, that I could add that would add credence to that reversal? Is it supporting on a trend channel? Is it supporting at a Fibonacci retracement number? Is it supporting on a moving average? I'm not using those indicators to make my decisions. I'm using my candlestick signals to make my decisions and then adding everything else to see if that's going to add uh, uh, support or resistance to my uh, uh, my analysis of why it was reversing at that point. So, well, I guess I've talked faster than I thought. So we use everything possible, like Netflix, where we can see it kind of had a wedge formation, and then notice what it happened this time. As it got closer to the bottom of this channel, it did a bullish engulfing signal. And a bullish engulfing signal is this green candle completely engulfs the red candle the previous day. And then they open positive the next day, confirming the bullish signal. And then what's it tell us about this resistance level? They didn't stop at that resistance level. So now what's our analysis become? We stay long until we see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. Uh, Pilgrim. Add whatever uh, you want to to the charts. You can use whatever trading method you, you'd like. But if you add candlestick signals to your charts, it's going to make it much more clear what's happening at those support and resistance levels. So we just like to utilize as much information that we can build in with our candlestick signals. If we can add other indicators um, to those to that analysis, it just improves our probabilities that something at that level has occurred to make that a uh, a, a reversal place. So, all right, I've talked faster than I thought. I guess that was about uh, 45 minutes. So before we get to uh, questions and answers, I'll be glad to ask questions and answers, and I'll even bring up live charts if we need to. But Pat has put out a special. We've got a... Uh, uh, our video, which I think is $147, she's putting it out for 17 bucks. And so I always have to explain to me, people, if your information is worth that much more, then why uh, 
why are you selling it so cheap? Because through the years, I've discovered that most people look at candlestick analysis. A lot of people have them on their charts, but they just don't know how to use them. So that, that kind of is like the, uh, the story about the uh, young Indian that left the reservation, went to Harvard, graduated top of his class, went to Wall Street, was making millions of bucks. And then the, uh, the tribe called him and said, we want you to come back and be chief. And so his heritage was much stronger than his, his uh, will to make money. So the first day he got back to the reservation, he was in his teepee and all the elders came in and they said, how much wood should we collect for the winter? And he had no earthly idea. So he said, come back in an hour and I'll, I'll give you an answer. So they all filed out of his teepee. As soon as they filed out, he flipped open his cell phone, called the local weather station and said, what do your computer indicators look like for the winter? And they said, oh, it looks pretty much like it's going to be what it was last year. So he called everybody back in and said, go out and collect the same amount of wood you collected last year, but collect two extra weeks worth of wood just to be safe. They did. A few days later, for him to be safe, he called back to the weather station and said, ah, your indicators still look all right. And he said, ah, it's going to be a little bit colder than what we thought. He goes, oh, man. So he called everybody back in and said, hey, go out and collect another two weeks worth of wood just to be safe. And they did. And so a few days later, to be safe, he called back to the weather station and he said, all right, your indicators still all right? He goes, oh, no, it's going to be a little bit colder than what we thought. He goes, man, so he called everybody back in, and now they're getting a little bit perturbed. And he said, you better collect six weeks' worth of wood now just to be safe. And they did, and they were grumbling. So a few days later, he called back to the weather station and said, all right, uh, what's your indicators? They're still all right? And they go, oh, no, we're going to have one of the worst winters we've ever had. He goes, what the hell is wrong with your computer indicators? You can't get anything right. And he goes, oh, we don't use computer indicators. We watch the Indians. The more wood they collect, the colder the winter is going to be. So, if you're using candlestick signals and you know what what don't know what they tell you, it doesn't really do do you any good. So, for 17 bucks, uh, you get I think about a 45 minute, 50 minute uh, analysis of how to use the uh, signals and analyze the trend. And again, the trend is important because if you've got X number of positions in your portfolio, and that's another thing we teach people. The biggest bugaboo that most of us have as far as our investing is our own emotions. And I say that as we, that was the biggest bugaboo I had when I was investing or starting off in investing. I was the worst investor in the world, and I was even a stockbroker for eight years. So I have had to set up everything to keep my emotions out of my trading 100%. And part of that is doing your uh, portfolio management uh, correctly. So I have, if I've got a portfolio of say a half a million dollars, I've got 10 $50,000 positions. I keep all my positions exactly the same dollar amount because when I make a decision, I don't wanna be making it because I just bought $200,000 of a stock position that looked great because I know that if it doesn't work, I'm gonna, say mentally, oh, this is one I really analyzed that was going to be doing good, so I'm going to hold on to it until everybody else sees why it should be doing good. And I'm selling it out a few days further down than what I should instead of selling out a unit of my portfolio. So um, if I've used my trend analysis for the uh, markets, that's the first criteria for establishing how heavy should I be long or short in my portfolio. Obviously, if the uh, trend looks like it's going up, I'm going to maybe have eight out of the 10 positions long. If the trend is heading down, I may have eight out of the 10 positions going short. If the market is choppy moving sideways, I might have five longs and five shorts. The advantage of the candlestick analysis is it's very simple. And within, even if you don't, if you're just learning candlesticks, in less than 20 minutes each day, you're going to be able to find the best two or three long positions and the best two or three short positions, or it might be that if the market's moving up, you're going to find the best six, eight, 10, 12, 15 positions that are heading up. And now you have the opportunity not only to be buying, um, buying long positions, but you've got the opportunity to sort through to see which ones of those have the most potential to the upside. So I think uh, yeah, Yana has put on the uh, link for this uh, offer. 
Again, for 17 buckaroos, three cups of uh, Starbucks coffees, you're going to get a lot more information than you expect, number one. And number two, I think she's got a, uh, uh, in that, you've got a 30-day free trial to our website, which is the candlestickforum.com. The link doesn't seem to be working. That is not good. Link is not working. Well, how about that? Oh, it worked. All right. So the other, let's see, let's try it again. Now, our website. We have our, our chat room is open every day. We've got usually around 200 people in the, uh, uh, the main chat room. We also have 40 or 50 people in our option trading chat room. Um, and I, so that's open every day. Each Monday night, I do a training session for people showing them what the markets are doing, what the commodities are doing, currencies, what patterns seem to be working the best. And, uh, I put out two or three stock picks every day, not so that people have stock picks, but we do it in a video format so you can see what the rationale or what the analysis was or what the signals or patterns were that created that, that buy or sell uh, recommendation. So um, I always uh, equate it to the, uh, that if you just give people picks and they don't learn what they're doing, it doesn't do them any good. It's like the cop that's standing on the street corner and he sees this drunk weaving down the street in his car. He blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, walks up to the car, and he looks in the back seat and there's a penguin sitting there. And he goes, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your back seat? He says, oh, I found him out on the street and I don't know what to do with him. The cop said, well, take him to the zoo. And the drunk said, oh, I didn't think of that. Well, the next day, the cop's standing on the street corner, sees this guy weaving down the street again, blows his whistle, pulls him over. Walks up to the window, and there's the penguin sitting in the back seat. He goes, I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. The drunk said, I did. He liked it so much. Today, we're going to a baseball game. So if you don't understand why something works or why somebody gave you instructions or something, it doesn't do you any good. So um, anyways, the 17 bucks, you're going to get a lot more information than you expect. And then, uh, again, I think there's a 30-day free trial to our website. So. Um, I let's see. Let me see if I can. Oh boy. Uh, all right, let's do this. Uh, yeah, no, let's shut down the uh, all the uh. Uh, projector. Oh, I can do that. Let me stop the projector. Let's stop the charts. And let me pull up some live charts here. This might take a second. I my computer locked up. Uh, let's see. And while we're doing this, if there's any questions on candlesticks, I'll be glad to answer them. And let me do this. Well, let's see. Let me do this once I pull up the. All right, let's see if that comes up. I remember we uh, we started buying Netflix right here. Our analysis or our trend or our trade remains simple. We just stay long as long as it closes above the, uh, the T-line. And notice how today it used the T-line as support. This is not something I recognize. Same analysis for the Dow. 
this is what we call a J-hook pattern. We have a strong price move, it's pulled back, starting back up. If it breaks out through this level, we know that this wave right here will be the same as this wave right here. So we had a very important criteria today. Notice how we had indecisive trading right in here, and then a day where it closed just below the T-line, but on the 20 yesterday. Then today, our criteria would, it would have been, if it opened lower and started trading lower, we're out of our long, start closing out long positions and add to the shorts. Now, the pop-up of today's trading told us exactly what's happening. They haven't been able to close back below the T-line. Same criteria over here on the NASDAQ, where the NASDAQ came down yesterday, just touched the T-line. So that was our important criteria yesterday, was that the NASDAQ couldn't close below the T-line. And today, when it popped up, it told us this J-hook pattern is still in progress. Where is the softball game? Uh, I don't know. Oh, we were looking, gonna go ahead and look at Cisco. Cisco, same scenario. You've had a big, where do most people sell? This is, this is the basics of candlesticks. Notice how we were in the oversold area. Where do most people sell? They sell at the bottom. This used to be me. I would always be the person panic selling at the bottom. And as soon as I sold and it started moving up, I'd always ask myself, how come when I sell, it turns right around? Or when everything looks great and the news is wonderful, and then we start seeing... As soon as I buy, we start seeing sell signals. Yeah, this is a doji right here, day of indecision. Then the next day is a bullish engulfing. This is what we call a left-right combo. A doji followed by a bullish engulfing, especially in the oversold area. Where was our next target? Notice how far away we are from the uh, T-line. The worst case scenario is gets back up to the T-line and fails. All right, we're coming out of a trade, but at least we made a little bit of money on a bad trade. With it doing this little uh, J-hook pattern, I would think that our next move could be back up to test the recent highs. So the, using the candlestick signals and patterns make it very simple. This is what we call a slow curve. Notice how there was nothing to this until they got out here and broke out above this level off of this slow curve. Then what would we expect coming out of a slow curve? A very strong price move. So essentially, we're looking at wave one, wave two, now it's in wave three. Do you use stops? Yes. When I get up into the overbought area, you look at this chart and say, where's the logical spot to tell us that this should not be trading if we're in an uptrend, especially in the overbought area? Well, on an intraday basis, it better not trade back below the previous day's uh, open. And if it opens positive, and closes more than halfway down this candle, that tells me I have a dark cloud. I close out the position. Um, uh, Pilgrim, we do, when we do our training in our uh, options area, we aren't trying to come up with a trade to fit our strategy for our options. We're trying to fit the right strategy for the chart pattern. So we will be doing if very simply if we're more than three weeks out from expiration we're just buying calls or puts anywhere from two to three weeks out we're buying probably a debit spread and if it's the last week of uh of trading before expiration and the chart looks like it's moving in the right direction we'll do a credit spread obviously a credit spread won't be highly profitable but the probabilities of them working are extremely strong so we tr we teach people how to use the correct trading strategy, and they aren't difficult. They're either spreads or uh, calls or puts outright. Um, a lot of people want to do the uh, iron condor or the butterflies. We don't have time to do that. We want to find what is the best trade for the time frame and the pattern that is developing. Um, just interested, how do you handle the flash crash like the one in August of uh, I think we were already, well, first of all, you have your stops on. Let me see if I can get back that far. That's, oh, this, oh, this was, remember, this was, we were expecting this. We were short on this, uh, this crash. 
because look what happened all summer long. We had a big dumpling top. So we were shorting over here because what happens coming out of a dumpling top? Usually a big downdraft. The opposite of a fry pan bottom, which looks like this, usually has a big strong updraft after that. Um, uh, Randy, yes, candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. I used to trade the E-minis off the one minute, three minute, 10 minute chart combination. I trade things like uh, uh, soybeans and cattle and crude oil off, usually off the uh, uh, the 10 minute chart uh, chart. So when I'm trading, oops, when I'm trading uh, oh, off a 10 minute chart on a daily basis or on a uh, interday basis, I'm looking to see what the trend is. So I'm usually trading in that that direction. Um, uh, no, Pilgrim. Uh, yeah, that's what the 30-day trial is to see whether you want to, want to join the service. So again, candlestick signals work just as well. This could be a one-minute chart. This could be a uh, daily chart. This could be a monthly chart. If I was trading the YMs, we could see that they were trading up. On the day, you go to your 10-minute chart. This is what happened in the 10-minute chart. Came up, pulled back, and then started back up again. You can see the wedge. Same type of patterns will occur on your 10-minute chart uh, as they did uh, on your daily chart or your monthly chart or your one-minute chart. Um, uh, B grinder, if you're having problems, if an order to see if an order went through, if you just uh, email Abraham at Candlestick Forum and tell him that you were in today's session, that you're seeing whether your orders went through, uh, he'll help you out. Okay. Oh, Apple. That's what we were going to do. Apple, we have not been trading because right now Apple is not showing any direction at all. We were buying here because when it broke out, this is what we call a doji sandwich. Notice how we had a big day, then a doji type day. And what is our simple rule of a doji? It's going to move in the direction how they open it after a doji. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. So when it opened positive and our stochastics were still heading up, that told us this day and this day were usually going to be about the same. So if they're in an uptrend, they can't close it below the T-line, even this day right here. That's not a sell signal. That's just a down day in an uptrend. Where did they start seeing sell signals up here when we hit the, the uh, 200? Where was the next target? Probably back to the 50. What happened when it got to the 50 in the oversold area? This is what we call a piercing signal. Gap down below any of the previous day's trading and closed more than halfway up this candle. That told us we were in an uptrend. Right in here, we were out of the trade because right now, as you can see, there is no direction right now on Apple. Now, that's why we're trading over in Netflix because there is a direction. We've got uh, calls still on in the Amazon trade because notice what happened when it broke out here on our little J-hook pattern. It's just been in what we call a 45 degree as long as it stays above the T line. Whoops, I've kept us way past uh, time now. So with that, uh, if there's any more questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I'm trying to think of what else was interesting. Uh, we've been in the WABA trade because once it broke out on this low curve, we're making very good money on these calls. The nice thing about candlestick analysis is not only does it tell you when what the direction of the trend is going to be, but it will show you which ones will be strong trends, and it will show you right at the time to be buying or selling. You don't have to be waiting around. Here was our morning star signal, close above the T-line, breaking out through this level. That told us we were probably in an uptrend at that point. So this is not rocket science. This is just learning what the patterns tell us because candlestick signals 
patterns are based upon the most, I want to say, consistent in, uh, indicators in the world. And that's human nature. And human nature hasn't changed over the last 400 years. Human nature is not going to change over the next 400 years. So, all right, with that, everybody have a good evening. Thank you for showing up tonight. Hopefully, we'll see you in the chat rooms. Raleigh, Yana, thank you very much for the uh, session tonight.